Patch 9.1 and Season 2 of Shadowlands is on its way and I figured we'd take a look at this just like we did as 9.0.5 came out and I'm going to give my thoughts on where all the classes are and you know perhaps what the meta is going to look like in Season 2 and what might change as well. Uh, this is a very interesting website if you haven't seen it. I already made a video on this and we're going to be referring back to that video here mostly because I want to see what's changed over time. So this is a very interesting topic to me because this is actually not an opinion, right? So I'm not 100% sure how uh, valid it is, but uh, you know, it does seem like it's covering a very wide key range. I mean, that's an 11 level difference, which I think if you actually look at your own play habits, when was the last time you varied in 11 levels? It's usually the first week of a season and then never again, but it's interesting to see regardless. So let's take a look at it. Last time we did look at the affixes. Doesn't really look like much has changed. Uh, but I will point out that apparently in season two, they are actually changing the affix rotation. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on routes and changes that undergoes Mythic Plus. I will be making a lot of videos on that. So stay tuned. Um, all I can say is they nerfed a few affixes. So hopefully you've seen that video. We talked about that just the other day. And I definitely think like Necrotic, uh, it's getting a very, very slight nerf. It's still going to be one of the worst affixes for me. But, you know, then you see here, it seems like they agree, right? Like Necrotic bolstering, obviously the worst possible week, even though they nerfed both of these affixes slightly. So maybe this goes up a bit you know bolstering in general gets slightly easier raging being uh, one of the worst to fix is very strange to me as well i can't see how this is a very easy week and it looks like it's basically just all tyrannical keys at the bottom now so last time we looked at it we'll take a uh, yeah there was one tyrannical affix ahead of one fortified affix now that is no longer the case at all it is all fortified at the top and all tyrannical at the bottom and i guess that makes sense as the keys get higher like you know we're talking about 16 to 27 actually it's interesting because if you look at it i wonder why the range is so different it says 10 to 26 that's an even bigger range now it says 16 to 27 that's very strange so at the time uh maybe there just wasn't enough keys because it seems like it's the same number 38,399 38,400 so there must be like some kind of the numbers identical right so there must be some reason that that number is being used uh, and now that does that mean that just way more people are doing keys that are higher? I guess it does, right? But I don't know the statistics behind it. But so, yeah, I would say that like tyrannical, um, now that it's going to be more important in season two, uh, hopefully it won't be looked at this, uh, this badly. I do think a lot of statistical data that might be collected on tyrannical weeks is flawed. I was talking about this in another video, but it does feel like people just simply don't try on tyrannical week. Even uh, an easier tyrannical week, people just don't even care. So they kind of just like go through the motions more so. So it's like pretty easy to invite bias into this, the statistical samples there. Like, especially when you're looking at a push week, like, yeah, obviously this is the best week, right? These are great weeks, but even compared to the harder weeks, like a grievous spiteful week, right? Like it shouldn't be two tiers lower. It's almost the same affixes, right? The difference is people are going to put way more effort in on the push weeks. And I think that's a problem with the scoring systems in general. So. Anyway, let's look at Dungeon E's tier list. This is an interesting one. So right now, Plaguefall is tier one, number one. Let's quickly compare it to what we had at the beginning of season, uh, well, the beginning of the midway point of the season. Uh, we had Mist tier one, number one, and that's fallen all the way down to uh, tier three or whatever, B tier. So that's very interesting. That was on its own, Mist, at the time. So yeah, a lot has changed. Uh, that is very surprising, to be honest. Uh, we also have um, Necrotic Wake Joe go all the way from the C tier up to the S tier. That's pretty uh, pretty nuts, to be honest. Uh, that's another big jump. And I think that, that uh, you know, obviously the Plague Fall changes are going to make that dungeon worse in Season 2. But I do feel like all of these dungeons are certainly not getting any harder. Like, there's been big nerfs in all of them. Uh, you know, Spires as well. They nerfed really the only hard part of that dungeon substantially, and that's Ventanac's second boss in there, so really good. Otherwise, it looks generally the same. We have a Theater, a move up one tier, and the other side in Sanguine, stay pat. And then, yeah, uh, Mist, you know, obviously dropped down two tiers somehow. So I think what that should tell you is that, I mean, there was actually no dungeon changes since 905, right? Like, this was in March, now it's... Yeah, you know, three three and a half months later, there have no but there have not been any dungeon changes. So it's a very interesting thing to see. This is why I like doing this kind of stuff. But Miss is not gotten any harder. It's just the other four dungeons have somehow become way easier for people. I'm not exactly sure, honestly. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, the tank tier list. This is obviously the thing we used to be very, very interested in, still are, and uh, disappointed to see where we shake out. But I'm a little bit more surprised than you might think. Um, so here quickly, I can't really get them both like that, I guess. There we go. So you'll see here we have a Vengeance still S tier, Bear, and Brewmaster was A tier. So they've dropped down to B, and then we have DK falling all the way a uh, whole tier to C, where Warrior is now moved up one tier. Okay, so at the time, Warrior was in a really bad state. They were buffing them. We talked a lot about that in uh, that video about how they were going to become very strong. I'm quite surprised to see them uh, basically not any stronger. I mean, obviously moving up a tier, I still don't really know the values used here, but I don't know. I, I don't know if they're calculated in order to, like I said, when we used to do tier lists, it was always in order as well. Like you're basically ranking a one through six. It's not just tier lists. It's also a one through six. So I don't know if this means it's fifth overall. I can't see how. I cannot see how Warrior would be worse than either of those two tanks. Like for me, it would be like this. It would be Bear tier, like Bear on S tier. Then I would have Vengeance and Warrior on A tier. Okay, so Bear would be on its own. I don't. I am still absolutely shocked that people think Vengeance is as good as it is. Like I still don't see it. I understand their offense is crazy, but I really don't think it's as crazy compared to some of the other tanks. Um. So I would definitely have Bear, and I think Warrior would be right behind them. So Tier 1, uh, Bear alone, and then Vengeance and Warrior uh, 2 and 3 in that order. And then at that point, I think it gets a little murky. Honestly, I do not think Prop Pally or Brewmaster is, is any good at all. Like, I do not think that they're above Blood DK by any stretch of the imagination. Again, this is based on actual stats, but yeah, I don't see how that's possible. Like, I guess there's just not a lot of people playing Blood DK. Like, I got to 2... 2036 score on Raider IO and I'm top 250 and probably like lower than that like 235 I think in the world so not a lot of people playing Blood DK especially in US it seems like so I guess that's probably part of it but yeah no way uh, do I believe Blood DK is uh, not at least not on the same tier as Brewmaster and Prop Alley. I would definitely put them fourth overall if I was making the tier list and uh, I think they're only getting stronger in season uh, season two here because um, one of the big issues is damage. They're getting a slight damage buff. Um, they're getting more uh, like I think those new domination sockets and all that stuff that's coming that really plays well into Blood DK's hand because a lot of them are self healing or leech oriented things that improve your effective HPS and other tanks don't really want that. Like they would prefer having somehow uptime maybe on shield blocks something like that. Blood DK, just give me as much healing as possible, and I'm going to go through everything fine. So I'm surprised to see it, uh, but I guess, you know, based on some of these other tier lists you're going to see, it could be a lot worse. Uh, and I, again, I certainly do not, personally, I cannot believe that Blood DK is not a really good pick in Season 2. We'll see what happens with the Lieutenants, though. Um, if there's any like, anything at any point that's, like, mostly health-based, um, Blood DK is really good. Either that's effective health, uh, you know, actual health hp raw hp anything that has to do with your health pool blood dk is going to be very strong and that's also why bear is good too okay so we're moving on to the healer tier list which is a a bit of a different situation let's put it that way yeah they have a whole <laughs> big gap there let's put it that way so if you look at the 9051 uh, things were quite clumped up we had holy pally uh, and uh, i'm gonna put it like still right above resto shaman uh, and that made a lot of sense, especially at the time. We have Dick's Priest, which is like, oh no. At A tier, I certainly didn't agree with that at the time, and I was very shocked to see that. Now this feels a lot more realistic. To me, this is exactly what I would say. I, I would say this is exactly as I would have it. Yeah, Holy Pally clearly on its own. There's no competition right now. Holy Pally is the best healer. I say no competition. Now they're getting some nerfs in 9.1. Uh, mostly damage related, though. When I'm talking about Holy Pally being strong, I really don't care about their damage as much. Like, it's valuable, obviously, uh, but that's not even on my mind for the keys I'm doing. So, I think, like, they can still do really good damage, even if they're not maximized for damage, and even if they get nerfed. So, I think they're still the best healer by a mile. Maybe Shaman gets slightly better in respect. Uh, but, yeah, Shaman's holding Pat. They're not really... The, the, the rest of the healers aren't having massive changes coming. Holy Priest is getting some buffs, though. I don't know exactly how good those changes are going to be for dungeons, but 
Yeah, I think definitely Holy Priest is right behind Resto. I could see it being on a second tier, you know, a different tier than Resto for sure. It does feel like this is appropriate. Um, definitely Dis Priest below Holy though right now, which is really rare to say this. If you ever watch me talk about healing in the past, you would be very shocked to hear those words coming out of my mouth, but I completely agree. This priest just does not do significant damage. Their actual damage reduction stuff just doesn't seem to work. Like, I don't understand why it's never used. I still don't get it. Apparently, it just doesn't contribute a significant amount of success for the healer. I have no idea. They're basically just a resto, like a bad resto druid from what I could tell. Uh, so, yeah, they slowly bring more offense than resto druid at least. And resto druid being all the way in C tier, fifth overall is like, man, how did we get to this point? In BFA... They were, by and large, the only, like, it was like Holy Pally. There was no competition. It was crazy. So very interesting. But then you see all the way down to F tier. So, uh, again, if you look at what we had in 905, God, they went from, I mean, again, I, I don't know if this is actually in some kind of order or what, but seemingly fifth overall on B tier all the way down to F. Now, that has to be because of a lack of, representation there's no way they're that bad and when you put something on f tier it better be for a goddamn good reason because that is a strong statement to make especially when you skip an entire tier i really have no like this is not how a tier list should be there should never be a tier skipped okay that's not how it should work first of all i think people are way too focused on f it's, like, it's not even alphabetical order right so Anyway, um, yeah, I don't like that, but regardless, they're making it seem like it's extremely bad, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's not good, that's for sure, so I don't think it's that bad, though. Okay, melee, very different as well. Let's take a look at melee. You will see a somewhat similar picture, but there's definitely uh, <laughs> the thing I predicted, warrior. No business whatsoever being at the top of that tier list back then, and I don't see how it ever was. It made no sense to me what it whatsoever. There's like a whole bunch of people arguing with me in the comments about why Warrior was good, and I don't... There was nothing valuable about that argument. Like, Warrior brings nothing but offense. So, if they're not the top damage dealer, then they should never be in the top tier. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, Outlaw Rogue brings a lot more than just damage. They definitely should be in top tier. Um, so, Outlaw Rogue being alone, though, is surprising to me. Uh, and there's a lot of people talking about... You know, Outlaw being the best spec come in Season uh, 2 as well here because now you're going to be skipping a lot more. You're going to be back to using Shroud. Uh, perhaps there's more value in the rest of the kit. I don't know if they're getting buffed or not, but yeah, Outlaw is definitely not bad right now. I don't feel like it's like an insane damage dealer, but it is quite capable. Very good. That's what surprises me, though, that Windwalker is alone on Tier A. Because I think they do way more damage than Outlaw right now. I've seen some absolutely insane numbers from Windwalker. Like, ridiculous numbers. Like, 50k on AoE packs. It's like, wow. Um, but, yeah. I mean, their utility kit is strong, too. Obviously, Ring of Peace. Very valuable when you need it. Kind of useless if you don't. Uh, but I do think it's strong right now. I don't have any issues with uh, seeing a Windwalker in the key. And, obviously, uh, they're one of the few Kyrian options, too. So doesn't really uh, hurt to have that. I do like Vengeance at, on B tier. Now, if you look back again, uh, Vengeance was actually, or uh, I'm sorry, Havoc was actually also on B tier at the time, and I was hoping to see them rise. I guess we're satisfied that Fury has just fallen, uh, because I certainly do not agree that Fury is better than DK. I, I don't, like, most of the rest of this just seems like absolute nonsense to me. But um, anyway... Yeah, Havoc definitely better than Warrior. <laughs> That's for sure. Havoc should... Really, these three are the only ones that I would consider good right now. Um, yeah, I could see, like, this being on its own, and then maybe Windwalker and Havoc being on A tier. And then at this point, I would definitely have Unholy, or maybe even Frost DK, probably way above... Certainly way above Fury Warrior, but yeah. I mean, Warrior's fine, I'm sure. I do think Enhance is more valuable than uh, this list is making it out to be, but... Yeah, so I think Warrior perennially overrated. Don't really understand how it keeps getting high on these lists. Uh, and I think, like, it's just because it's offense. And that's good. In, like, a medium key range, like, you know, a key that's not necessarily your your progression goal. Uh, yeah, Warrior's a great pick because they bring a lot of offense very easily. But are they going to be better than Havoc, Windwalker, or Rogue? Absolutely no way. Are they better than the rest of the picks? 
I mean, I honestly don't understand, like, how Rhett isn't better than it is. I've been playing a fair amount of Rhett recently, and it's like, this class is bursty, man. I'm talking about ridiculous numbers that I've seen. So, yeah, I'm very surprised. But, yeah, I could, uh, I, again, I don't have any idea what's with the jump. Like, it's very hard to believe that, like, I know Assassination Rogue isn't that good in AoE scenarios, right? But... Assassination Rogue is like the top PvE spec in the game right now, uh, especially for melee, um, for, for raiding. Uh, so it's hard to believe that they aren't at least somewhat close. Like four tiers separated, that's very hard to believe. But I just don't get this whole skip here. So yeah, I would definitely think DK is better than it is. Um, so I would probably put like, if it was me, it'd be like, you know, like I said, and then I'd probably have DK, and, and I used to not really base it on classes, or only on, I used to base it only on classes, so I wouldn't even really be worried about this, but I do think Frost is quite viable, like, they're very good, they're, they're probably just as good as in Holy, and uh, having a Death Knight in the party is quite strong, for a variety of reasons, having the extra battle res can be valuable, uh, and, I, and I think Enhance is solid too, so yeah, th this is a, a fine tier for me, I just don't think it should be below C, uh, and then, you know, the rest, like, especially these four, like, um, Arms Warrior, I, I don't ever really see. I guess it's probably just worse than Fury in every way, so that kind of props Fury up. Subtlety Rogue is not looked at as very good right now, but I think they're getting stronger in 9.1. Uh, and obviously Survival. Apparently Survival's getting, like, way stronger in 9.1, but for me, like, it doesn't even matter, man. Like, again, the, the spec would have to be the top DPS in the game, because it's, like, why would I ever take a melee hunter? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't really want that. <laughs> the same thing with Feral Druid, and, and you could say almost the same thing about Enhance. But Enhance does bring a lot of the good things that Ellie also brings. Whereas, like, you know, it's not really a problem for survival. Hunter doesn't actually really bring that much, to be honest. But Feral Druid, it's like, you don't have Trents or AoE Silence. What the hell are you doing? Am I, it, like, it's just don't. Nah, that spec's like non non approachable that should be alone on f tier all of these should move up and that should be alone on f tier maybe even sub rogue and i could see maybe survival too but certainly rep pally is not on the same tier as feral druid that doesn't even make sense to me feral druid is now, rep pally is quite good man i'll tell you i'm, I'm never disappointed when i see a rep pally Okay, so let's look at ranged, and I will tell you, uh, this one is an interesting one. Okay, so here's what we have for the last uh, season or whatever, the last portion of range. And uh, the bottom hasn't changed much at all, but the top is one to take a look at. So we have Bombkin and Fire Mage standing pat at the top. Now, a lot of people are saying Bombkin is toast in 9.1 season 2. That's it for them. I don't know why. It seems like people are talking about them switching... Uh, from, uh, you know, the covenant that they have with Night Fae, switching from Night Fae to Venthyr. I don't know why they would do that. Like, I don't understand anything about this, the spec, honestly. Um, but if they're going to do that, are they losing their burst niche? Because that's, like, kind of all they have right now. Like, I don't fully understand it, honestly. Uh, and I do think the spec is a bit overrated, which is, again, ironic coming from me, but... I do think it should probably be about A tier right now. I don't think it's as good as it is. It's damage, I don't think it's good. Like, I feel like I never see a good damage output from a Bombkin. But they bring so much that it's like, I don't even care at that point. So for me, I'm a lot more interested in talking about this than the other, the melee stuff especially. So this is how I would do it. Right now, I would definitely say Elemental is tier 1 number. Might even say number 1, honestly. Like, I would say they're a top tier pick for sure and again if you look at last uh, last time they're all the way down on b tier that looks like number seven overall so it's a big jump all the way to three overall and i would put them even higher i could say that fire mage is very good right now obviously their damage is extremely good i do think they're also overrated though so if i had a pick i would probably put tier one number one elemental shaman tier one number two fire mage Tier 1, number 3, Bombkin. And then everything else would come underneath it. At that point, I would definitely be having a Hunter above B tier for sure. Again, I don't, you know, they're, they're, they're A tier back then. I don't see how they've gotten any worse. I don't fully understand that part. But again, this is statistics, so it's all good. Uh, but yeah, Marksman somehow has gotten worse. I still think they're very good. They don't bring a ton of utility, though, unfortunately. Certainly better than Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest, I see no... They're kind of like the warrior uh, for range. Like, I don't really see the point in bringing a Shadow Priest. 
They do have a lot more utility than they did in BFA, though, which is good. Uh, and then they're certainly better than Affliction. Affliction, you know, I feel like can be very good. Uh, Warlock does bring some good utility in some dungeons, so I could see them being on that tier like that. But I would definitely have number four overall as Marksman. Uh, I probably would move Shadow Priest down a whole tier. Maybe we put uh, Affliction there, and I would definitely be raising Frost Mage up to the same tier as these specs. A uh, Mage in general is good. I don't have any problem with Frost, and I really don't have any problem with Arcane anymore either. I've seen some really good things from Arcane. Um, not as good as Fire, obviously, but yeah, Frost is excellent. The problem is they really struggle on Fortified Weeks compared to Fire. Fire is going to be very, very good on both types of affixes, whereas Frost is only extremely good on Fortified and not that great on Tyrannical. So they're definitely, you know, I would say definitely B tier. And then I would, yeah, I would probably have like Shadow Priest. I would probably also be putting BM Hunter and, uh, Arcane Mage on the same tier as Shadow Priest, like certainly don't feel like they're any worse, uh, especially like BM Hunter. Like I feel like BM Hunter is like almost just as good as Marksman. I still don't fully understand the differences, but I've seen a lot of good BM Hunters too, and people like meme on them, but like legitimately they seem fine. Uh, and then a Destro Warlock is an interesting one because I think they're getting some big buffs in 9.1, and I think a lot of people are talking about going Destro over Affliction in five mans. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see, but I don't know where they fall so um demo you know perennially is always going to be one of the worst picks just because they don't have an interrupt and uh i guess they're a little bit more um it's a little they're a little clunky you have to really like build into the packs i, I believe from what i've been told so anyway that's that's it so I'm, I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts on this uh what the biggest changes i feel like coming into season uh, two is that there's not going to be a pride anymore so these classes that are like hyper bursty, like Fire Mage, Bombkin, um, you know, maybe even Windwalker, these classes are gonna be they're gonna be watched. I feel like they're gonna be a little bit more tempered. It's not gonna be a slam dunk to invite these things, but they're probably still gonna be really good. Like a, you know, the class changes themselves don't seem to reflect any massive change. Uh, the tank one though, obviously, I do feel like uh, Vengeance's day is done. I don't know. Like I would really like to see another tank take up the crown. And I don't see how another tank hasn't already. So I'm not sure. What do you think would have to happen for that to occur? I don't know. But I do think Blood Decay is definitely on the rise next season. Even though uh, this website has them low tier, I can see their uh, potential. And I'm very interested in seeing where we can get to as Blood Decay. So thanks for watching. I will be reading all the comments in a uh, subsequent video in the future. And I uh, hope to hear your thoughts then. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.